Hi, my name is Lou Toth from Ivy Tech Community College, and I'm here to show you how to set up the IR Vision system using the CERT card. And today we're going to cover just the basic connecting the hardware and getting the uh, teaching PC set up so you can install and use the Vision software and set up the camera. So we're going to set you up all the way to the point of getting ready to do the Vision process um, taking into consideration the lighting aspects for the camera because when you first set this up from scratch you could have too much lighting uh, too much light entering the aperture and you'll have to adjust that and that's not something easy to do. But first you have to have a um, PC or laptop with admin rights and this does work with uh, Windows 7 and pay attention over here to this line you must use only Internet Explorer Firefox and Chrome do not work. Standard Ethernet cable is necessary. It can be a crossover or a straight through cable. And a calibration grid of your choice. That should have been provided with the robot when you got it. So first the um, R30IB controller. You've got to make sure this slot is turned horizontal as shown in the picture so you can unlock the cabinet. You've got to get inside of that cabinet to install the Ethernet cable. So turn that to the left. A big fat screwdriver works really well. Then while you're pushing in this silver knob, this tab, push or turn that uh, black knob there and then this is all part of the cabinet. The door then swings open. Okay. You should see something like this. You've got your camera ports underneath here. There's a close-up, and later on, if you forget to put the um, cable in the right port, you can change on the cheat teach pendant and decide which port to use later. I use port one. Down here is your camera multiplexer board. You can see our camera is plugged into the port number one. It takes up to four slots. The camera cable is already installed in this system, so it's coming along over here. And we're going to show you how to install the Ethernet cable into port one. There's a picture of the multiplexer board. You have the possible four camera ports. First thing you have to do is remove the cover plate on the right side of the controller so you can access the cables. So just two screws will remove that cover. Then on the inside there's a bunch of rubber cutouts. You should be able to find a small one that can just be pushed out to make a small enough hole to push your ethernet cable through. This is the blue cable in this picture. Then you want to run that cable through your controller with enough slack so that when you open the door it won't pull the cable. So tuck it all along the inside there so when you close the door it won't pinch the cable. Run it over here to the camera port card, the multiplexer, and plug it into Ethernet port 1 that's on the left hand side. Now go ahead and close the door and power up the controller. Once the teach pendant is uh, ready and you want to press menu, then select and go over to setup and all the way over in the second setup screen to host com. Once you go to host.com, choose the very first item, TCP IP. Press the soft key for the detail. And you'll notice this screen right here. Originally, all these fields will have asterisks in them, except for your board address, assuming you have a camera board. What you want to do then is start filling out the information up here. Give it a robot name. I just call it robot. Give it a port IP address. This is the address that you plugged into. You can give it any address that you want. The subnet mask needs to be set up properly so that the first three octets are 255. And then down here, skip down and change your computer IP address to an address of your choice, but the first three octets have to match the first three numbers in your robot IP. Now if you plug that Ethernet cable in into port 2 by mistake instead of port 1, 
this soft key down here on port will toggle this and you'll see this number change to two. So that's one way to change your ports back and forth. Once you're done on this setup screen, you do have to restart the controller, let it boot back up, let it come back up and initialize and get back to the menu on the screen. The second part will be setting up the PC. So we just set up the controller. Now you have to set up your PC or your laptop to talk to the controller. So go ahead to your network connections screen and right mouse click and do a properties on your network connection. Scroll down to internet protocol and then click on properties. You'll see all three fields for IP, subnet mask, and gateway. And these, these have to match what you put in in that previous HostCom window. So whatever you use for the IP address for the um, PC, the subnet mask, and if you are using a router, that's what would go in the gateway line. Again, that's the computer. IP you're putting in, okay? That's what would go for your computer or your laptop. That's the IP address you will use. Now, Windows XP, you, you'll have to most likely restart the computer to make the uh, network changes take effect, but I believe in Windows 7 and up, you do not have to do that. So once you make your network changes here and restart if needed, if not, you can continue. Now you go to the control panel, the Windows Firewall, and it is recommended that you turn off the firewall, but it may not be necessary in Windows 7 or higher. Next, we want to go to Internet Options and go to the Security tab, and you want to go to Trusted Sites. You have to make the robot IP address a trusted site that you'll be connecting to. So select Trusted Site. Enter the address of the robot IP with an HTTPS colon slash slash prefix. Then when that's done, then go ahead and click on add, and then you can add it to your trusted sites. I tried it before I did that on my Windows 7 laptop and it did not work. So then I came to trusted sites and it worked fine. Next, you want to go to internet options. Go to the Privacy tab, and you want to turn off your pop-up blocker. Again, this work, this is necessary, I believe, in Windows XP, but it's not um, necessary. It was not in my case for Windows 7. Now, my setup for Windows 7 may be different than yours or whatever version of Windows you're using, so just be uh, aware of that. Be sure to click on Apply anytime you make any changes. Now back on the uh, Teach Pendant, back in the menu setup host com screen that we were at, if you remember that screen, there was a ping selection. If you click on that soft key, press the soft key for ping, you can actually ping the PC from the robot controller. So you're going to ping the computer from the robot controller's standpoint. And if you're connected up properly and everything's working, you should see the word succeeded after the ping for that address of the computer. That's a good thing to see if, if, if the succeeded message comes up. If not, then you'll have to do some basic troubleshooting. And there's a few steps here I'm going to cover. That's basically going to the IP config uh, screen and making sure the settings are set up properly on the PC. So first you'll go to start and then run and type in CMD. And then OK. OK, on the IP config screen, after you enter it in, you'll see these numbers. Make sure these numbers match what you typed in earlier for the IP address subnet mask and if you're using a router, the router gateway. If these numbers don't match, you'll have to go back through the process and repeat it and make sure it was done correctly. Once that happens on your PC or laptop, open up Internet Explorer and Type in the address of the robot 
right there on the address line. And you should see this page right here. It's a web server. The robot controller has a web server built in. And this is where you'll do a lot of the setup for the vision process. Very, very nice interface. Once you click on setup, it'll know if the inst installation of the software is present. If not, it'll prompt you. Go ahead through all the screens and install the um, setup files to run vision. So accept any changes and select run. Once that's done on your PC or laptop, then come back to the web page screen that you were at a minute ago and select vision setup and that's how you start all your processes for setting up the camera and doing the calibration. Now before you do the next step, you need to think about lighting conditions. My particular robot was in a big room, a big lab area with a lot of overhead lighting and I struggled for a long time to get the picture uh, to show the image and I could not so then I realized that I might have too much light entering the camera and if you want to adjust the aperture uh, you've got to do a few things so we're going to assume that you have to adjust the aperture for the lighting I'm not sure you're going to cover this or find this anywhere so uh, you'll see it here though there might be too much light entering the aperture so on your light fixture right behind this is the uh, adjustment ring but you first have to remove the light ring so there's two set screws right here for this whole light fixture before you remove that you want to put some slack in that lighting cable so you can pull that down a little bit. Go ahead and remove the screws. And you can see the um, ring right there. That is the aperture adjust ring. On my particular camera, I would rotate it to the left to close the aperture and not let enough um, light in so it could be darker and could focus on the uh, table down below. If you have too much light entering the aperture, it'll be a washed out look, it'll be too bright, and you won't be able to see anything. So adjust your aperture accordingly. You'll have some kind of image down below on your table. Once that's done, consider any lighting overhead above the camera card or above the cert card or in the area. You may want to turn it off, or another trick you can do is cover the top of the cert card. Um, if it's too dark, you may have to add task lighting, and that could be brought in at the top of the cart pointing down. So if you see shadows in your camera setup window, you'll have to take into consideration some additional lighting. The other thing is, you can use the light that's built into the camera, and that works fairly well. To do that, you would go to the digital output screen, and that's in menu, then I.O., and over there to digital. Once you select digital, scroll down to the I.O. number for your uh, camera light. In this particular setup, I have uh, 101 set up as the camera light. So click on the soft key, F4, to turn on the light. Once you do that, the light will turn on in the cert cart, and it'll look like a, a reddish glow, but it does help to illuminate any area you have down below quite well. You can see over here, my overhead lighting is right above my robot, so I did have a shadow right here on my image. By turning on this light, I was able to illuminate that shadow and have a little bit better image. Of course, when you're done, you want to turn off the camera light to go back and click off on the uh, digital output screen. So then you're ready to set up your camera and perform a 2D calibration, which are additional steps, and doing it on the, cam on the PC or the uh, laptop will be much, much better than doing it on the iPad. That you have a much bigger screen, it'll be more flexible, able to um, set everything up. That's it, thanks for watching.